for the day. Just take me away. Where we all feel the same. Where we all feel okay. Where we all feel no pain. Yeah. I don't wanna stay down no more. Hit me with the pain and the stab as I grow. Turn up the mic gain as I grab what I know. I want the right fame just to pass through my flow. I wanna teach some masses like classes. Just out of practice, so maybe you can pass this class called life. We live and we die, so we might as well try. Not only get by before you're in the sky. I've been running long enough, think it's time now for me to face it all. Every second going by, I'm losing time now. It's time to take it all. I'm okay, I'm okay. No pain, yeah, there's no pain. Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been running long enough, think it's time now for me to face it all. Every second going by, I'm losing time now. It's time you take it on. I've been running long enough, think it's time now for me to face it all. Every second going by, I'm losing time now. It's time you take it on. To the curse, hit me where it hurts. Everyone's the worst. I only got myself. I don't need any help. Already been through hell. I know that you could tell. I only need a chance. I only need a plan. I'm going all in and I'll do it cause I can. Feel like you fall in. Catch yourself with my hand. I'll pull you back up till your feet feel the land. Yeah. These words, the verse, it hurts. I work, rehearse, I purge the curse. These words immerse my nerves. I slur, reverse, then work, reverse. Now I talk with intent. I talk to the I talk to the world and I meant what I said I talk and I blend A speech from a friend It's not about the life, it's what you do before it ends I've been running long enough, think it's time now For me to face it all Every second going by, I'm losing time now It's time to take it all I'm okay, I'm okay, yeah There's no pain, yeah, there's no pain, yeah I'm okay, I'm okay, yeah, yeah. I've been running long enough, think it's time now For me to face it all Every second going by, I'm losing time now It's time you take it on I've been running long enough, think it's time now For me to face it all Every second going by, I'm losing time now It's time you take it on Do you know what I know? Do you love? Do you hate? Do you care what I say? Is it all just the same? Always make these mistakes Ooh, e baby, take me, let me All I wanna do is please Wanna spread like a disease Ooh, e crazy, tasty, baby I just wanna feel you breathe I just wanna feel you need yeah. Next to a savage yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress Next to a savage If you wanna stay, eh, baby girl don't go Oh, but the other way eh, Nobody will know oh, If it's all the same eh, Call my place your home Oh, I don't wanna chase, eh, but don't want you to go Oh, all I want is you, ooh, all you need is me yeah, I know what to do, ooh, only I can see yeah, No, I love the view, ooh, climb under the sheets Do just what you do, ooh, put me back to sleep yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress next to a savage yeah. Oh yeah, I woke up on my mattress Next to a You side. take a fucking bad chick Put her on a mattress Baby, she's a savage But she lets me have it Oh, we getting at it Want a couple glasses You could be my captive Baby, be proactive She looking so attractive Dress with the backless We can make it happen You could be Thank you for joining us again. We are about to watch Team UK versus Team France. 
Well, to be perfectly honest, this is almost the El Clasico of Quidditch. France versus UK. They met in the final of the European Games 2017. France, heartbreakingly for the UK. I'm sorry, I'm British. They... Sorry, 2015 they met in the final. And 2017 they met in the final. So this... Realistically, a lot of people would have thought this would be the final, but here we are in the semi. So that means one of the teams is not going to make it through to the final, some would say. And what do you think about that, Alberto? Well, I definitely think France has a reason to try and get some excitement underneath them today. They had a difficult day one with a loss against uh, Norway. That was an incredible game, but they've got to make sure to play as a team if they want to keep up against the UK. UK is definitely a very hard-hitting team, and they're going to try and drive and score on you, as opposed to the chasers circling around inside the hoop that France has been seeing a lot of this weekend. Looks like we're preparing to start with our head referee, Kim Couch, from the United States, one of the best referees we have in USQ and the IQA. Yeah, I would agree with that. That's fair. That's a fair assumption. I believe yeah. she was ref of the year in USQ last year, and France looks like they're going to start off with possession, but UK able to get it out of their hands. Tom Stevens, number 59 of the UK, has the quaffle. Passes to Seb Waters, number 10 of the UK, passes over to 20. Gets <laughs> slammed into by Mikael, uh, number 9 of France, and the refs have called a stoppage. As we've made it a whopping 14 seconds. 14 whole match. seconds. Uh, I do think these refs... The team they've got there are going to be quick, hopefully. I know we we've can got time. Have high hopes. We can have high hopes. Bridge. I've not got time for a long, drawn out ref discussion right now. Well, to be honest, for the rest of the day, it's too well, hot. To be honest, if they spend too much time out there, I'm sure the ref's cleats will just melt right into the ground. So <laughs> they'll learn quicker rather than later that they need to keep things moving. Because you get these, uh, you get six athletes on both sides running at each other. That was. Yeah, that was quite a long time to, for you know, before a stoppage compared to some of the games I've seen this weekend. Yeah, we've definitely had longer uh, stents without stoppages and cards earlier in the day, but as the heat starts to take its toll, teams start to get a little sloppier, willing to take a little bit more risks, and it's definitely showing. Luckily, our refs are able to make sure these games are clean and properly called to make sure that we don't have any unnecessary injuries on the pitch. Looks like we're about to resume while uh, head ref Kim Couch is talking over the card with a beater from the UK. Uh, Miss Carpenter it is, number 30 for the UK. Here she will be getting a card. We will wait for the confirmation. Looks like we will have a bludger turnover as well. Now Alex got carded in the first game of their, their first game of the tournament yesterday for a false start. She is very fast, but you still got to <laughs> play by the rules. A bit too fast. It they, appears they're trying to change Bludger possession, but the French team already has Bludger control. So they're going to reset it on the midline. And play has resumed. France, France. looking to capitalize. Seb Waters did not let them capitalize on being uh, a player down. That was fantastic play by Seb. Score remains 0-0 with both teams' defenses on point right now. French in control of both bludgers as their beaters come out, looking a little lethargic, really trying to reserve some energy. And it doesn't look like the UK is all too excited to bring it up quickly either, taking their time and trying to pace out the French team. That's just Seb style. Seb uh, was the king of slow ball in the UK. And I think oh. some say they changed the rules to counter Seb specifically. Um, okay. Some that's, say. That's some fair say. enough. I'm honestly not a big fan of slow ball at all. I really like the high intensity, high impact quidditch that you can see right here in the hoops as UK is the first one to score today. See, one minute and 10 seconds. Took them to score. More, uh, just, yeah, despite, be, despite being a player down, they managed to score. Mm -hmm. That's very good, very impressive. I've always been very impressed by the UK team. They were really impressive at Worlds, um, and they really are just developing for next World Cup right now. This isn't even their full strength that we're seeing on the pitch, and they're still putting up an incredible fight. If you're talking about developing, then you've got to be looking at number 15, Mikey Orridge. 
uh, international debut for Team UK. Well, not international debut, debut for Team UK. Uh, has played EQC before. Uh, he's only 16, just turned 16. Really? Only 16? Only 16. Don't know why his number's 15. I can see why that's confusing, but... Well, that's fair enough. He definitely doesn't look like a 16-year-old with that stature. His number is 15 because he played QPL, Quidditch Premier League, the UK's answer to MLQ, when he was 15. They bent the rules for him. A fantastic group of players that like to get an extra Quidditch outside the regular season as the UK is going to score again, taking us 20 to 0. Favor UK. The crowd is about equal on both sides. You can hear Alice Blue, Alice Blue, and you can also hear Team UK, Team UK. So to be honest, neither chant is that great, but they're getting the job done and encouraging the players, and that's what it's all about. Team UK always has a pretty big following from what I've seen. Yeah, it's because British people like coming to hot places with good beer. <laughs> Fair enough, and it is definitely sweltering out here. I believe we're hovering around 40, 44 degrees today. And a great tackle by number 50 by the UK team, but France still fighting to try and get the pass off. That number 50, Ruben Thompson. Uh, fun fact, I've used this before, but he builds boats for a living. The boatman, I've heard the boatman, the boatman, the boatman of Falmouth. <laughs> From tiny little Falmouth all the way to Team UK. Uh, <laughs> Sab Waters walking up the pitch again, passing across the field to number 20. Looks like UK is really spreading out their chasers behind the hoops, waiting for a pass to open up as the French team collapses back in. Really staving off those, shoot, those shot blocks and making sure that UK has to drive it in if they want to punch through the holes. And it really looks like both teams are starting to slow down now as they bring the quaffle up. Really trying to take their time and not waste any energy if they don't have to. At this level, of course, it's just is very tactical. It's definitely required. And that's going to be the first shot made in by the French team. Takes us 20 to 10 in favor of the UK. Number 90 by 99 for Team UK, Jacopo Sartori went for a massively long beat there. Uh, and now Team UK had to collect a bludger from the far side of the field. So Team UK without bludger control. So... And it looks like they're being a little strategic with their bludgers as well. Trying to... Oh. Trying to make the beat, but it comes in a bit low, and that's going to leave them on a defensive... Oh, tracked, but number 99 is able to recover a bludger. Helps. And now the Team UK has bludger control again. Quick turnaround, taking it away from the French. You have number 20 with a nice little juke, pass back to number 10, looking behind the hoops. Is he going to be able to make the catch and score? No, number 9 from France, going to bring him down. And France is going to try a quick drive. There are two defenders, a pass over to 25, Lenny, and he makes the goal, tying us up 20 all. What's the UK going to do about that 2020 with five minutes of game time? Well, I think they're going to continue to play their game. It doesn't look like France is really getting into their heads. The UK seems to be playing their own tactics right now. Trying to really yeah, play You that can't let the ball. French get into your head. No. <laughs> you cannot. That's what Norway was able to do uh, to the French, and it really threw them off their game. Yeah. And Lovely goal by shot. number 20, Ben Malpass of um, Team UK. Of course, Malpass being bad pass in Spanish. <laughs> but he's, he's not got a bad pass. He's got a good pass. No, oh, well, that wasn't the best bueno pass, pass. It was a great score. Bueno pass, number bueno 20, pass. bueno yeah. pass. Sitting just over six minutes in, the score is 30 to 20 in favor of the UK. And an incredible catch and beat by number four from the French team, picking up the rogue bludger, giving their team a little bit of time behind the hoops. A spin by number 25 again as he scores. Second in a row for the French team on number 25. Ties us back up, 30 all. And big things are happening in Germany versus Belgium on the other side of the field. Yes. Yeah, so More people are watching that, obviously Germany 
being the home team, much more support. Um, You're definitely going to be hearing some uh, crowd reverberations and some uh, cheers on the other side as this is the second game Germany and Belgium would like to play, but that's going to be a quaffle turnover. <laughs> as we had a ball come flying into the live stream tent, trying to make sure the players don't run into dangerous terrain. I don't care about the players. I care about the thousands of pounds of equipment we've got here. That's fair. <laughs> that is very fair. Okay, I care about both. Fine, I care about both. Yeah, ¿Por qué no los dos? We've got another pass, number 25. He's not able to punch it through. It was a block by the keeper on UK. Number 20, not able to avoid the beat. And it is back in the France possession. Score remains 30 all. If you had to place a bet right now, who's your money on? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Uh, I'd have to place it on the UK right now just because of how France played yesterday. I don't know if they can quite shake off all of that funk, but they have been an impressive team nonetheless. With I have to bet the UK. That's Sorry. Right. And as an American, <laughs> that hurts me a little bit. <laughs> what are you going to do, throw some tea over it? Oh, yeah, I'll throw some tea into the river. I'll ask the French for your assistance in uh, a few of our civil wars. It'll go great. Good times, good times. <laughs> Only 1,700 kids, remember. <laughs> and a great defense again by UK. It's definitely going to be a defensive and bludger game today. The Chasers are going to have a hard time driving their way through, especially with all their energy being zapped by this sun overhead and not a cloud, well, not a sizable cloud in the sky. Captain Ed Brett is now on. Okay, a nice for team UK. Team the UK team. What is, and a pass and dunk. The alley-oop makes it through, giving the United Kingdom the lead, 40 to 30. And a stoppage of play. Looks like we're having a bludger reset. Bring one in off the pitch as we shuffle off the water team for Team UK, trying to make sure they stay hydrated in this sweltering heat as the game restarts. We're sitting at almost nine minutes into this match, halfway until the Seekers are released. The beats are so hard in this game. You can, you can hear the reverberation of the bludger hitting someone. Oh, on his feet, he takes a little hot number 25 for France, dunking it again. I believe that's his third goal this match? I think so. France being mysterious, on the cheat sheet, where it says names of players, they just put their shirt number, so all I know is his name is Lenny. I have no new information to impart on you about him. When you play Quidditch that good, you don't really don't need to be called by your name. <laughs> the really oh, good one on France. <laughs> Let's see if he can keep it up or if he burns off his energy a bit early. France does seem like they're running a, a bit quickly. UK still keeping their distance around the hoops, trying to wait for their opening in the beater game. Ball in the hands of Asha Piatek, number 14 for Team UK. It looks like we're going to have a stoppage of play by the refs. We'll wait to see what that call is. Here's to be on the French team. And a good call by the head ref there, noticing the contact from behind. That will give Team UK a bit of an advantage as they're in scoring position right now. And with bludger control. Oh, but not able to capitalize. Number 25 for France once again picks it off. France it is MVP right now. Oh, yeah, right, number France 25 is for France doing an incredible down the job field. trying to open up the pass. But number 25 continues to go around. And can Lenny get to the ball quick enough? As, ooh! We have a bit no. of a scrum behind the hoops, and oh. we will have another stoppage of play. Possibly some more illicit contact, but we'll find out from our head ref. And yes, indeed, it'll be another contact from behind call. Both teams having one player in the box. We are sitting at just over 10 minutes right now with the score to 4-all with France in scoring position behind Team UK's hoops. Both teams down a chaser. 
Number 25, Lenny, is he able to toss it into the hoops? No, can't get it into the top bins, and we have a reset back to the France side of the pitch. See, the French beater is complaining that Tom Stevens got beat, but then rolled. He was just turning away from it. And another score by number 25 on the French team, getting through two of the UK defenders. And we're stopping the game again. does look like we need a bit of player rotation right now for Team UK. They seem to be a bit winded and can't find a, an answer to number 25, Lenny, for the French team right now. The beaters aren't able to get a clear shot on him as he just barrels through quite a few of their chasers and keepers down by the bins. If we're talking about the bludgers making a sound, running into team, uh, Tom Stevens, number 59 of Team UK, is a sound of... <laughs> that's like you're hitting a wall. A brick wall. Oh, very true. And see, honestly, that's the type of Quidditch I like to see. I'm back from the States, down from in Texas, yeah, where we have the high. Oh, impact. you should have met. Number five on UK for contact off the pitch. Hey, yes, you. It seems we had some contact off pitch as the game is about to be reset. We're about to reset play with an apparent quaffle turnover. Okay. We're going to have a timeout for Team UK right now. So you're from Texas. You should have mentioned that. <laughs> yes, that is very true. I'm a Texas player that has spent the first four years of his Quidditch career playing in USQ and the last year and a half playing for Quidditch Mexico. Mr. Worldwide. Oh, yeah, I got to travel around. Texas, <laughs> Mexico, over here in uh, Germany, trying to make the best out of Quidditch. <laughs> I uh, totted up the miles I'd done for Quidditch. Uh, two years ago, I totted it up, and I had done enough miles to go twice around the world. And in that time, I've since been you know, to Germany from the UK, to Italy from the UK, to Belgium from the UK. So... I uh, try not to think about it anymore because it's The travel it's that you too do far. for some of these sports can be ridiculous, but the friendships that you make and the people you meet along the way make it worth every bit of travel time, in my opinion. The real, the real Quidditch was the friends we met along the way. Exactly. <laughs> Those random practices that you can show up to between the week. It's not about always these massive tournaments that get held because it's quite a lot of work and quite tiring, in all honesty, for a lot of the players and volunteers that come out to put their effort on the pitch. Sometimes it's a bit like, which is the fun part? Like, you go up, you get up super early, you go to bed super late, you generally eat, just eat pasta or whatever you can find, like, you're in a strange city and you don't know where anything Wait, is. Wait, pasta? <laughs> I eat food all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it's definitely worth it. All right, looks like play is about to resume as we're sitting at about 10 minutes and 26 seconds. Score in favor of France right now, 50 to 40. It's not going to stay that way. Oh, not at all. This is going to be a game within swim until Snitch gets on pitch. And I think that the UK is going to have a bit of an advantage with their beaters and seekers once that happens. A little bit of hesitancy from Team UK right there, waiting for their pass as number 34 Excellent. barrels his way through. Big boy, Alex McCartney. Taking us to 50 all. Alex McCartney, number 34, making his uh, Team UK debut. Again, a lot of Team UK players preparing for Worlds <laughs> and getting their whole feet ready for Richmond. Which is exciting, and that's what European Games is all about. That's what Pan Am's about. That's what these tournaments are supposed to be. Um, everyone's been looking already. Good 2020 vision. Ha, 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 ha. All right, with France in control of the ball, they are going to make a pass by the hoops, picked off by a chaser from the UK side. Quickly trying to make their way down the side of the pitch. Can France hold up a good enough defense? No. UK going back into the lead, 60 to 50. I love the confidence of watching Asha, number 14, on pitch. She's just, she's like, I've got the ball. Incredible. I'm competent. I'm going to do it. Competent I'm and gonna, confident. Competent, confident, secure. Yes, oh, Ruben Thompson did an amazing oh. takedown of uh, Pogu uh, from France. The passing game by the French team is very on point. Looks like we almost had an injury there on number 21 as he tried a little bit too hard to make that score. Uh, sorry, that was massively biased, just screeching. Yeah, Ruben, sorry. Um, Ruben's one of my teammates from QPL. We played together for three seasons, sorry. Bit biased about Ruben. 
Uh, he's going to bring me a boat one day. How dare you have sorry. favorite players in Quidditch? It's like you have friends in this community or Everyone's something. Everyone's my favorite. I don't have favorites. Our score sits at 60 all right now at 12 minutes and 14 seconds. We've got about five minutes until the snitch is released and six until seekers go onto the pitch. So, fun fact, Alex McCartney is left-handed. Really? Yeah. Oh, that can definitely throw a few seekers or snitches off. Well, that's a shame that he's keeping right now. But oh, yeah, that is a shame. Same thing, right? Same yeah, thing. Same, same, same basic thing. thing. Yeah, I'm colorblind, yellow, green. It's about the same color. Oh, I imagine he is good at seeking by just being, you know. That reach. But no, I think I think the UK has got one of the strongest uh, seeker cores. They've got a good rotation too. They don't let their seekers get too tired. They make sure to have a fresh one in there, even if they're defensive seeking. Oh, and it looks like we have a bit of a scrum next to the French hoops over one of the bludgers and an assistant ref with his hand up. Advantage called and a possible card. Mr. McCartney is going to go in and make a score as we have a stop to play to see what that card might be about. So advantage uh, being if the go game is going in your favor, if you've been even if you have been fouled, keeping the game going. To so ensure an adequate opportunity for the team in possession of the quaffle to try and make an attempt at the hoops. They then decide after the goal has been made or advantage has been switched whether or not that play affected or the card affected play, and if a player needs to spend time in the box or simply go back to hoops. And we can start to hear a little bit more of a crowd cheering for the game on the opposite side of the field from us, Belgium, Germany. So because the goal was good for Team UK and they retained advantage, the France beater will not have to spend time in the penalty box, simply have to de uh, dismount and re-tap in to get back into the game. Saves quite a bit of energy and time not having to go to midfield and then tap back in. And of course the card counts against them if they get a second yellow. Exactly. Two yellows will stack to a red. So then the advantage, the best way to explain it for me is like if you're making a run and the opposing player grabs you by the shirt, but not enough to slow you down completely, they'll let you keep running because it'd be worse if you had to stop, mm. get the card, and then try and get your speed up again, um, which I think just describes it quite well. <clears throat> see what France is going to do around the edge. They're spreading their chasers out a bit, trying to get a pass deep behind the hoops to avoid the bludgers. Oh, and a block by number 13, Albert from the French team, trying to set a pick, but unsuccessful as the bludger, the beater steps up, but Albert making the score for Team France, taking us 70 all at just under 14 minutes into this match. So Albert has, well, his team, him and his team are the Titans. Titan, Paris Quidditch, Titan has uh, won the European Quidditch Cup three times. An incredible group of players. Yeah, absolutely incredible. He himself is also the president of FQF, the uh, Francois Quidditch Association Federation de France. I don't know. And the man French. also plays for the Quidditch Premier League. He was up in Amsterdam this past weekend that's displaying his right. Quidditch prowess. So he does it all, and uh, they've been keeping him on the backbone, and he's only just come on this game and then uh, scored. So there you go. And the ball is once again in the hands of Albert. Number 13. Uh, he was roughing, or not roughing, he was helping to coach the Kidditch game, the youth Kidditch game yesterday, without a shirt, and I couldn't work out why he'd taken his shirt off to work with the kids. I realized one of the kids was wearing his shirt. What a lucky, lucky kid to get a really, really sweaty Albert shirt. Which is what, I, just what I've always wanted. Well, in this weather, anything to keep you cool, am I right? Oh. And Albert avoiding the tackle, getting wrapped up on the arm, and we'll have a stoppage of play as Albert tries to make that drive. And this might be the scoring opportunity that France needs to try and take a leg up again. Be a yellow card for a UK player.
Seems like France has two passing options on the outside of the hoops and a quick pass number 21 and contact isn't enough to knock him away from the hoops. So what amuses me <clears throat> about French Quidditch is they've come a very long way. So for ages, the rulebook wasn't translated into French. So they were working off the rulebook they did have, which was like rulebook three and the rest of us were on like rulebook six or seven. So we played them and they were doing things that were just, they're like, it is fine in my rulebook. And it's like, yes because you're using a different rule book from the rest of us. But once they got on the same level as us in terms of knowing the rules, that really revolutionized the game in France. Like, shocking, really. Uh, yeah, they, Crazy. They turned into an incredible powerhouse, and thanks to the translation team on the IQA staff for being able to get something like that into their hands. Really is important to have a rule book in your native tongue to teach a safe and proper form of Quidditch. Looks like we have a few scrums out there right now. Some ledger turnovers, but UK is going to be in possession of the Quaffle as we're sitting at 16 minutes. And number 13, Bex Low. Or the other Bex. The other Bex, yes. Not depending, the commentator Bex. Depending on which one you meet first, either one of us is the other one, depending who, which one is 1.0 or 2.0, depending. Uh, <laughs> Let's see if the UK can tie it up with this drive. Oh, a long pass over the hoops. UK definitely taking those lofty passes. A lot of power in their Quaffle throws. Just being very relaxed, very tactical. This is very typical of the of the tactics very popular in the UK right now. The box, the square. I stand in a corner, you stand in a corner until we can... Pass around or a blood, uh, beater gets an opening. Yeah, break it down, break it down. It's a very strategic game and a lot of teams can't do it, especially when they get tired or later into a match. Definitely takes a lot of discipline, which UK is demonstrating quite well right now. Ball in the hands of Tom Stevens, number 59, who is in the top 20% of UK CrossFitters in terms of fitness. Really? Yeah. Did you enjoy that? That was a real fun yeah, fact. Yeah, no, you had quite a few fun facts today, Ms. Bex. <clears throat> I know nothing about France. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it looks like we have our snitch on pitch. Score remains 80 to 70 in favor of France right now. Nice. Blue card, delay of game. And it seems like we have a delay of game on the UK end. So France will end up with a quaffle with the point advantage right now. This game's still within snitch range though. So the UK as the defending European Quidditch Cup, the European Games champions, They've said in their notes, you know, anything less than the gold would be a disappointment, which I think it is. If you've won it last time, you kind of want to keep that, keep that going. And we have a score by number 21 on the French side. Valentin. 20 points up. Valentin of the Titans, or Valentin of the Titans, if you want. And a quick, a fast break by the UK team. <sighs> he gets double tackled and beat. Didn't seem like he had the support to make that goal happen. France now up 20 points as the UK beater sets up in front of the snitch runner the, as the Seekers are released. UK getting the first attempt, getting beat. And France having an opportunity just by themselves on the Seeker. And it seems like France has the real advantage now as it is 100 to 70. If UK pulls the snitch, that will take us into overtime. I wonder if they, that's what they're going for. They're and going it for overtime. looks like it is. It, we might be going into overtime with a 29-second snitch catch. We'll Part wait of to me see wonders if, if they realize that. I don't know if he did either. That was quite a quick score on the France side, and that might have been a miscommunication. But I mean, if he's able to get it the first time, that could give him the opportunity to catch the snitch in overtime instead of trying to win the Quaffle game, since France has been a bit superior. Wait. UK catch is good, game will go to overtime. It's... Oh, a bit of confusion on the commentator side for a moment. We heard the three whistles and thought that was the end of the game. Trying to make sure that the scores are right, but that is a hundred all, taking us into overtime with the UK. This chest got interesting. I've been waiting to say that all day. What are you talking about? It's been interesting all day. We had the second handicap in the first match of the game on our live stream pitch. Yeah, but I went into town to look at the cathedral. I took a little break. How dare you avoid Quidditch? I, 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 I it was a nice cathedral. Excuses. Excuses. 
This is my, well, I went to 20, I went to 2015. I was one of the TDs for 20, 2017. This is my third one. If I want to take a little break and go and look at a cathedral, then How dare I you will. Think about yourself and not think about Quidditch. Oh, it's That's always on my true. mind. It's always on my mind. Too true. It's always on my mind. It's always on my mind. Very nice background music here. We don't even need the pre-recorded <laughs> stuff we have. We have Bex commentating. <sighs> Looks like both teams are going to get a little refreshed now as we take our time preparing for this overtime display. Is this the first one this weekend? I haven't seen any others so far. How would I know? I was at the cathedral. Oh, you were at the cathedral, <laughs> of course. Wrong person to ask. Uh, so, no, as I far mean... as I have seen, this is the first overtime we've had at EG this weekend, but we do have five pitches going at once, and only two of them in view of the live stream table. So, have you seen much of European Quidditch before this? Uh, before this, I've only seen some European Quidditch while I was at a uh, World Cup this past year down in Florence. Other than that, I've traveled and played with a few teams in Antwerp, in the Netherlands, in Germany. But this is the first true display of competitive Quidditch I've seen in Europe, and I'm quite impressed. Good. That was going to be my next question. My, my next question was, are you very impressed or are you really very, very impressed? We'll that was going to be my... <laughs> see how impressed I am. Because right now, I've still... Still waiting to see a little bit more contact that I'm really used to from that USQ Southwest region. Style oh, do you play in Texas? Oh, yeah, no, we have to say that at least 10 times because everything's bigger and better in Texas. It's the best hey, state in the Texas. union. Texas! Hook them. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm... No. <laughs> gig them, yeah, gig them, gig them, exactly. gig them, gig them, gig them. Turn those gig boards upside down. Gig them every day of the week. Aggies for the win. I don't gig on a Sunday. All right, so we're getting our bludgers and quaffles reset as the team switch sides. This is so, oh, this is so exciting. It's fantastic to see this kind of Quidditch being displayed out here in Bamberg. All right, and our head referee, Kim Couch, seems to be resetting everyone right now. Getting our lineups prepared, making sure no one's stepping over the line to get a head start or an advantage on that Quaffler bludger. I like seeing number nine of um, Team France, Mikael Poisson. Poisson? Poisson? I'm just butchered that. Um, he was just doing a bit of meditation there, breathing in and out, and just like, <sighs> head in the game. Head in the game. So the snitch floor now is 30 seconds. Uh, so game plays for 30 seconds, and then the seekers come on. We're looking for who has got the most points at the end of five minutes, or... Uh, until the snitch is caught, who's got the most points. If, uh, if it's tied after five minutes, we go to even more exciting. But with a snitch catch sudden at 29 seconds at the last one, I don't know if we'll be reaching that this goal. No, no, I want double overtime. That's what they oh. give the people what they want. Oh, I want it, of course. I just don't know how realistic it is. And France, three of their players jumping a bit quickly. Un, deux, trois. As players are resetting. Almost jumping Brimstone. again on the France side. They're probably from Paris, Frog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a bit of contact on the UK player. We are going to have an injury, it looks like. It seemed like we had some rough contact low as the two chasers tried to go down towards the quaffle. Don't know if that was head contact near chest, but we are going to have the medics come on the field now to make sure that our player is all taken care of. We don't need a lasting injury. Yeah. Um, I just hate to see this kind of thing. Of course, right now with the heat and everything, I think... Yeah, you, know, you might just be winded and just, oh, it's hot, and oh, I've just been hit by someone. You get the wind um, knocked out of you, get a bit dazed and confused, but we got to make sure that our players are out here drinking water, staying in the shade, and staying hydrated. But it looks like UK is able to get back on his feet and hop off to the side. Doesn't seem to be, seem to be too lasting of an injury. Good to see. What's at this level? I don't know how many times all these players have played each other. Um, it's important to bring new ones in, but you've got your, your go long-standing players, yeah. players, so... Some of those Titans players will have played well. Those of London players, Raptors players. What, just six weeks ago, we had the European Quidditch Cup. It was a late EQC and an early EG, so it's all come together at quite a close time. But It keeps people well-practiced, as long as they're <laughs> able to avoid their studies and finish their exams soon enough. It's been a big problem for a lot of the players on these national teams. Yeah, well, when your team is a 17 years old, then yeah, like, I'm sorry, i got to get back to school on Monday. 
there's not a problem with Team UK, apart from Mikey now. And it looks like we're having a little bit of a scrum for the Bludgers. France maintaining control right now as they want to make sure to have them as the Seekers are released. France getting the first opportunity at the Snitch once again. So one Bludger by the Snitch. The and French Seeker. Like we had a catch. Looks like the Snitch was a little tripped up on that one. We'll have to see what the referees have to say. But France has the pull for now. See, a bit of an excite, a little bit of excited number 99, Brooklyn from the France team. So, Brooklyn 99, his shirt, Brooklyn 99, no. his his card, cool, 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 noise, noise, oh, noise. Oh my god, that's so toy! Toy! It's going to be a win for the French team in overtime! Number 44 getting the snitch catch. So that's France in the final. It's France in the finals. UK not going to be able to take home that gold this year, sadly. Definitely the redeeming factor for France right now after that upset with Norway yesterday. I can definitely tell that little fire underneath them and kept them quite passionate and focused. I get the upset with Norway. I'm upset now. <laughs> but oh, I can tell. You, your <laughs> entire posture changed as soon as that whistle blew. <laughs> Slumped right down. Um, yeah. Oh. As an American, it is always nice to see the United Kingdom lose once again. So, <laughs> well, Once again, a little bit of that biased commentating coming in. I, I have been rendered absolutely speechless. That rarely <laughs> happens, and I literally do not know what to say, apart from don't mention the Alamo. Anyway, oh, 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 anyway. Hey, we won at the Alamo. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna <laughs> pick up that thread. No, 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 no. So, Team UK is gonna be naturally oh, disappointed by that. Um, but they, they can still, they can still medal. They can still medal. Yes. We're talking like, we're talking like someone's died. No one's died, we're okay. But they Just, can still take away a medal. <laughs> That's, uh, well, it's not like their hopes and dreams died, like some other teams at EQCs. Oh, no, their hopes and dreams have definitely died. They'll be holding a funeral for their hopes and dreams, but... Oh. Sad, yeah. sad day for the UK, but incredible... But congratulations France. to France. I mean... Oh, yes, they definitely earned that one. They came back and made sure to stay within range. And a little bit of anger on the UK side as he kicks a bludger off pitch. But then jogs very sedately over to get it. I think that's okay. We are going to hand over to our analysis's, analysizers, <laughs> analysizers right now. I've been Bex McLaughlin. And Jorge Alberto Coronado here. Oh, muy bueno. Very good. <laughs> <Gracias>. <laughs> Thank you for uh, staying with us during this stream and make sure to tune in for the rest of the games we have today. Und dann haben wir noch einmal zwei Durchsagen. Und zwar zum einen ist ein Handy in einer grünen Platzhülle gefunden worden. Ein iPhone älterer Generation. Die Sprache des Telefons ist auf Deutsch. Das Telefon kann abgeholt werden am Headquarter außen vor dem Stadion. Und die zweite Durchsage ist, dass äh, morgen um 20 Uhr findet ein offenes Quidditch-Training bei den Kelten Bamberg für alle Schüler und Schülerinnen und für alle Bamberger beim SC Eintracht statt. Ihr seid dazu herzlich eingeladen und die Bamberger würden sich sicherlich sehr freuen, wenn einige von euch, die den Sport hier gut finden, morgen dazu kommen würden. Tomorrow there will be an open Quidditch-Training at the SC Eintracht Bamberg. For all interested Quidditch players, you are all welcome, and the Bumbergers will be very happy to have you there. What a game.
Uh, I, no words. Fantastic. Both sides, in fact, actually, Belgium and Germany and France, France, UK, two incredible semi-finals, very close. France, UK, of course, went to overtime. Um, very close repeat of last year's grand final as well. Many yep. people thought this would be, great, would be grand final. Um, first impressions, thoughts, feelings? Uh, should we say our names first? I'm Gio Frino. Uh, yes, I'm Ajanta Rabe. <laughs> so, I think the UK were disappointed. Um, they started strong, two points up. And then it just kind of fell out their hands, ending up to catch for overtime with Callum Lake, who did catch a snitch in that final, caught again mm -hmm. today, but in overtime, had no chance. Sami Fakak, phenomenal, one run, one catch, that's all you need. The, the quality of, of the secrets on these teams mean that, you know, that whoever has budget control in that 10 seconds for the, that, that, that first opportunity, that they're going to catch. And we saw that both times happening. UK had budget control at the very start of, of Titch on Pitch, um, and that allowed Callum to catch in that very, very fast um, first offense for him. And then over time, Francis couldn't, like, didn't, 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 give a, didn't give a control. Alex missed a little bit on Sammy, and Sammy just had it. Yeah, and it was a very quick catch, I think. I'm not too sure, but it was within a minute, in my opinion. Easily, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, we had the minor stoppage for the injury, but then the catch was just there. Mm -hmm. I think um, one notable player who was missing for a lot of the game in the first, in the first part of the game was Albert. Yeah, for sure. He didn't have as big of an impact in the first half of the game. I think possibly you could capitalise on that. He came in a lot more in the second half and France really found their stride with him. I think a really big play for France in this game was actually number 25, Lenny, their chaser. Scored a huge number of their goals, saved their neck also against um, Turkey in the game before this. Um, he's been an absolute star for France this weekend um, and he'll probably be very important in the finals as well, I think. So I think maybe you could say potential inexperience in terms of from the UK with some very new players, players like Alex McCartney and Mike Yorri, just to name two who played. Um, it's their first time playing for the national team. Maybe nerves got the better of them, but I do think that when they were both on pitch, they did play very well for the very short since they were one, though. I think, so what's very impressive from the UK for me especially um, is whenever I'm on the side taking photos and so on, I'm always hearing their comps. They're always talking. Not just said, not just keep it, they're always talking to each other. Not just the chasers talking to each other, not just the beta pairs talking to each other, but the chasers and beta talk to each other. They have a very coordinated play, they have a very coordinated offense, and it pays off for them quite a lot as well. And not just listen to the, the experienced players like Seb, they also listen to Mikey Orridge, you know, 16, first time on the team, but he can give out commands on the field and they'll listen to him as well. They clearly all respect each other and they have great comms, and it does pay off a lot. Um, but, you know, that's it. On, the, on the flip side, UK are a very, very fresh squad this year, and they're, pl they're quite possibly playing the long game looking to World Cup next year. Yeah, I think, I think that's what uh, Jay and JT were saying. They're looking to try and develop a team to take the World Cup to Richmond next year that can really try and do damage against the top two teams, I'd say, the mm. US and Australia. And frankly, lots of the new players in the Team UK this year look absolutely phenomenal, I think. Watching, I th when, I, when I looked at the roster for Team UK going into the tournament, I saw, sort of um, um, had many questions about this. Like, very, very fresh roster. Not, thought, not sure how Team UK is going to go this tournament. Um, and after the first two minutes against Catalonia, they've been absolutely on point the entire time. I've been watching the games against um, Italy, against Norway this morning. They were absolutely fantastic. Their chaser offense in particular has been very, very good. Very, very um, incredible synergy. Um, the Seb Waters and um, Tom Nalpass, Stevens pair. And Don Tom Nalpass. Stevens. Well, ben LQC Nalpass. in general. LQC, Warwick. You know. Pick a name out the hat. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're absolutely phenomenal. Tom Stevens, Ali's behind the hoops. Absolutely beautiful every time. Um, but France were able to have a very, very tight defense. They played a very um, close-knit Baylor this time. Very different from what they played um, two years ago at EG in 2017. Um, and it worked really well for them for the most part. And they were able to get some very, very um, fast breaks in the UK. UK didn't have as much physicality on defense as France did, or as, to be honest, as any of the top six do. I think that's biggest, the biggest lacking at the moment in UK is their physicality on defense. And France were really able to capitalize on that a lot. I think, yeah, when Tom Stevens, Ruben Thompson, and Ben Malpass are not on the pitch, those are the most three physically aggressive defensive players mm -hmm. for the chasers wise. And when they're not on the pitch, the tackling does drop down quite significantly, in my opinion. Um, I do, uh, talking about the French Baylor defense, what they mm -hmm. did quite well was manage to hold bludger control while the UK just tried to pass it back and forth behind and in front of the hoops and eventually causing a delay of game warning mm -hmm. and then a delay of game turnover. Mm. That kind of patient style play, which the UK loved, was absolutely capitalised on and I'm sure the French knew that that was coming. Probably haven't seen LQC who run that typically, mm -hmm. Raptors, The classic Werewolves, Seb Ball. The Seb Ball, yes. Um, 
anything else, I thought I thought it was a very good game. I'm definitely have to watch this one back. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think a huge credit has to go to the UK's um, female chasers and offense players like Beck Slow, Azure PR Tech as well. Um, some of the tenacity on offense, there were like a number of scrappy plays where it looked like France should surely have the ball. Players getting wrapped up, and somehow the UK came out with, came out with the ball. And often it was because players like Beck Slow, Azure. Um, showing incredible awareness of where the other players are, incredible awareness of where the other beaters are, did a really good job cleaning up on offense and making sure they get the ball out of there. When their offense went to pieces, so they can restart again. Yeah, that's, that kind of heads up awareness play is something that I think Asher in particular is known very well throughout the UK and I'd hope the world for. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the UK, although they lost, in swim, which they'd be a bit disappointed in for the overtime. I think they shouldn't be too disheartened. They played phenomenally all weekend. They've still got the third place to play for, mm -hmm. so there's still potential for medals. And I think from this performance this weekend, going forward to Richmond for next year, if they have the majority of the same squad, which I think they probably will, I think they should do quite well, potentially a medal contender. So, starting with the third place playoff then, third place against Germany, I guess now. What are your thoughts there for um, the UK? I think it would be a close game. I think beats wise they match up quite nicely. The only thing I think they will struggle with is the typical European style where they throw the bludgers back towards their hoops. Um, where in the UK we don't typically do that. On defence we might go for the trades. Mm -hmm. But saying that, players like Jacopo, Karina Werner are used to playing in Europe, EQC, mm -hmm. World Cup and so on. So they know the tactic. Let's just see if they can capitalise on that. And then the finals, of course. France versus Belgium. A huge matchup again, very, very much large matchup from two World Cup games they played um, last year in Florence. What are we thinking that's going to happen there? I would not want to cross. <laughs> you know what I'm going to call? A good game of Quidditch. I think there'll be some big tackles. Both, both teams love a good tackle, very physical mm -hmm. players. Big drives, but also very nice, crisp, finesse passing. I think both teams were utilising that in their semi-final games and mm -hmm. throughout this entire weekend. And I can see that interplay around the hoops, those quick passes, would really pay dividends for either team. Definitely, I think so. France's passing game is beautiful that game a lot of the time. I think Belgium, after their initial scare with Belgium, uh, with Germany yesterday, have really come back into their own now. They've gotten over that sort of like jitteriness and they're really ready for this final. So I think we should be very excited for this game. I'm definitely going to be enjoying watching that one from the sidelines. I'm glad I'm here in person. <laughs> you about yourself? I'm, I'm very keen to be here again. I can't, can't keep me out of Europe apparently. <laughs> Worth the trip? Always. <laughs> ah, brilliant. So I've been Gio. I've been AJ. And that was the semi-final. Thank you very much.